Great Moments at Breakfast, presented by Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Barbara, the Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the boys are gone. <laughs> no more Rice Krispies. We ran out of Rice Krispies. My tears will not stop until I hear snap. My mother-in-law. It's her 15th visit so far this year. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Biggs, I got to say, I fucking hate these fans. You know, they, oh, they're coming to watch another episode of Monkey and Biggs. Oh, I can't wait to entertain these to lose. Oh, sh oh, fuck. Are we live already? Oh, sh oh that was a bit. That, that oh. was a, just a joke, right? We were joking, right, Biggs? That, we love our fans. That was, uh, I thought that was part of the script for the opening. Oh, right. Yeah. Can you forward you me the, the new script? I forgot to save the one with the revisions. Since every yeah, episode here, of Monkey and Biggs is. is scripted now, I guess. Okay. There said you it. go. There's the script. <laughs> <laughs> he typed, say we hate the fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really in-depth script, you know? <laughs> you spend a lot of time on it. A pokey says, I talked about my channel getting deleted in therapy. And I kept thinking about you getting deleted, and I kept laughing, and we speculated that was part of my autism. Okay. Biggs, would it be comforting to you to know that random people out there are telling their therapist about you? <laughs> so I, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, because this is kind of like family stuff, but um, one of my family members got in trouble with the police and in their interrogation <laughs> they were telling the police about your channel oh i don't know why? if i ever told you about that no why why so they, so they investigated your channel i'm used to that but what the fuck do i have to do with <laughs> your family i don't know that's weird they uh they apparently thought it might have tied in with uh some crimes that were committed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I've been investigated probably by every global police force at this point. Fuck them. They got nothing you, on me, Biggs. Didn't you do like a freedom of information thing on your uh, FBI file? And yeah, it and like nothing? it said nothing. But maybe that's what they want me to think, Biggs. True. It's an illusion of uh, freedoms, I guess. Biggs, this is one day after Valentine's Day. I believe... This was your first Valentine's Day as a married man. Am I correct? Yeah. Uh, what'd you do for this special occasion, Biggs? And should your wife divorce you for not trying hard enough? Uh, probably. Um, we ended up going to this all-you-can-eat sushi place that's pretty close to us. And uh, we ended up, like, uh, I would say hibernating after the amount of food we ate. <laughs> okay. Now, when you say all you can eat sushi, Biggs, how much sushi can you eat? I think that's the question on everybody's mind. So the way they do it there is you have like a sheet with everything on their menu and you put like how many orders of that you want. And then like the sushi rolls come in a certain like number of pieces. So like you, there's like an eight piece roll of whatever specialty. So the first round we did like four rolls of sushi and then like some appetizers and some other stuff. But then on top of that, we got a little too <laughs> overzealous, I guess on our second one and got like five more rolls of sushi and a bunch of other appetizers. And the, the rule with that place is like anything, like if you leave too much leftover food, they'll charge you for it. Uh oh, so, I mean, you're like, the man to go there with then. Like, you could make yeah. sure the whole table's not paying extra. <laughs> so it's like... It's like our buddy uh, Jared. Uh, like, we would go to B-dubs with Jared, 
And when we were ready to leave, Jared would like finish off everybody's <laughs> drink. Like even if there yeah. was six waters on the table, he, he, I guess he thought it was a game to see if he could chug everybody's beverage to empty. So yeah. I guess you could do that at the sushi bar for us. True. But yeah, so uh, the rule is like if you have anything more than like six pieces of whatever, then you have to pay for it. So we were like struggling on the last roll, few rolls of sushi, but we made it through. <laughs> and then we pretty much slept the rest of the day and then played some video games. So I'd say as far as Biggs goes, that sounds like a pretty romantic Valentine's Day. True. Yeah, all I did was we exchanged some heart-shaped boxes of chocolate, and that's about it. We're going to go to Outback uh, tomorrow for our Valentine's date. Oh, uh, you don't want to go to, like, Texas Roadhouse? They got better steaks than that. That's Outback. what I would choose, but this was her choice. That's her, oh, that's her favorite. So she has bad taste. That's fair. In men... <laughs> Biggs, are you familiar with uh, podcasts at all? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so there's this idea in podcasting where after the, maybe these two hosts will be together on many episodes and you'll love the show, but then towards the end of the program, they'll, they'll grow to hate each other and they'll start inviting on shitty guests every week. And they say, like, oh, I guess it's another episode with a shitty guest I didn't want to hear. Oh, I, I don't think I've heard of that before. But that's interesting. <laughs> really? You think that's interesting? <laughs> I don't think it's that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but Biggs, have you ever heard of uh, Have you ever heard of this thing called comedic silence? <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've listened comedy, to the Monkey and Big as, Show before. As a <laughs> as a, <laughs> as a professional comedian, you know, I'm a. Uh, I'm well versed in these ways, so uh, don't take the the silence as. Oh you know. no! It's it's like a staring contest of how long can we keep the the awkward silence going? Like who's gonna give up first? And it's not gonna be me anymore. I think the real challenge is how long can we just awkwardly stare at each other in silence until the the fans just like stop watching the stream. Well, we did used just... to play that game, uh, laying side by side in my bed late at night. But I guess yeah. it's different over the computer. Yeah. We would uh, wait to see how long it would take your dad to leave the room. <laughs> well, I was talking about here at my house. I don't know why my dad was <laughs> here, but that's fine. Maybe we were, we were going to watch a Serbian film with him. Yeah. Speaking of which, according to the PCP poll, a Serbian film will be reviewed on Is It Kino sometime next month, Biggs. Would you like to join us for that episode? Oh, boy. Uh... I guess. <laughs> you don't have to. That, we already have four people on there. It might be too many. That Oh, man, that movie is something else. It's been a hot minute since I've seen it. But uh, Speaking of movie review co-hosts, E. Rich McCoy said he will join us for the Zodiac uh, Wheel of Jake Gyllenhaal review sometime next month. Nice. Uh, did we decide on what day we're going to try and do that? Not yet. Should we talk about how we decided to change days of what the when we're going to do this? Uh, we've been so inconsistent that even if we said we're going to try to do it every Thursday at the same time, next week it'll probably be a Friday <laughs> and then a Wednesday. So who fucking knows? But uh, we'll try to keep doing Thursday. Yeah. Tentatively, Thursday is around this time. But anyway, we do have an update. In some epic YouTube drama, Biggs. And I'm not fucking kidding. This is legit. Uh, too Mad Dying? I heard about that. Don't give a fuck. Don't know who that is. Don't care. Biggs, this is more I important. Know a lot of people are talking about it on X. I, I I've don't seen, really know who he is either. I've seen tweets celebrating the death of a man that have over 50,000 likes. So, <laughs> like, th that, I don't know who this person is or what crimes he is accused of. But the fact that you can have that many people celebrate your death, I don't know if it's horrifying or hilarious. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't think I ever saw any of his stuff, but man, people have been cheering for that man's demise. Do you 
like me, do you kind of hope there's a similar reaction to your death? Like, like at least 50,000 people are recognizing his death. They might be celebrating it, but, you know, at least it, a man does not truly die until he's been forgotten, Biggs. Like, Dr. Hiraluk taught us long ago. Do you hope that 50,000 people like a tweet celebrating your death one day? See, I feel like, uh, hmm. I don't know. Is it? Would you rather be have... forgotten forever or hated and uh, your death yeah, celebrated? It's like, yeah, that's that's the question, really, because it's like, do you want people to celebrate your death or literally nobody ever talk about you again? And I think both are fine with me, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe we'll save that for some audience espionage in a little bit. But Aggie, or <clears throat> Biggs, uh, Aggie. No, no, this is about Aggie. I'm trying to get to this because it's very important. Last night, Aggie did a stream, as he often does, where he gets super drunk and starts calling random people. And he decided to call Florian Himsel. Now, as you may recall from this very program, there is a deep beef between Florian and Aggie uh, due to some uh, political... Uh, disagreements maybe we've been talking about it a lot lady lately on this show and on the big fat liar episode of visit kino but last night aggie calls florian florian answers and they had about an hour long chat on aggie's stream wow which as of this morning has been removed because i guess aggie got a little too drunk towards the end and he does not want i guess that up or, or i don't know why but uh, he did give me permission to clip out the Florian uh, Aggie showdown. So I did do that, and it will be up on this channel tomorrow. So everybody who has not seen that yet can tune in. Oh, man. If only it came out before, then we could talk about what happened in it. I guess we'll have well, to wait till next time. I've watched it. Uh, I could pretty much fill you in right now for anybody who does not want to wait and did not see it last night. Uh, unfortunately, about 40 minutes of it is just rehashing the Ukraine-Russia debate, and even I got a little bored listening to it. Like, uh, is this how it feels watching trash rats, just like people who don't know what they're talking about, debating fucking geopolitics? Oh my god, kill me. But uh, the other parts were more interesting, like just trying to mm, figure each other out, and if it's possible for them to work together or to at least review movies together with me on a podcast. And spoiler alert, uh, the answer they arrive at is no, uh, that they, they should not associate with each other and will not do so in the future. Really? Yeah. Dang. I didn't realize it was that deep, bro. I thought it was just some <laughs> some online beef, you know? One thing I'll never understand, and maybe it's just me, is how political views can cause people to just hate each other that much. Because, like, I feel like a good portion of my friends and myself do not share the same political views, and yet it's never been an issue. Like, not once. Did we take the political compass test on this show at some point? I think we did. Okay. That's the one where it's like the the four quadrants, right? And it's like it, what, it might be and blah blah blah, whatever that chart was. Do you hold any political opinions like strongly that if if somebody close to you had the opposite opinion, that it actually would affect you? So, my political opinion, I guess, the way I would say it is. I don't really care what others think. They're going to live their life. It's not up to me to tell them how to live their life. If they ask, I will tell them my opinions on things. And if they don't agree with it, who cares? <laughs> if I don't agree with theirs, who cares? I mean, it's like, who am I to tell somebody else what they have to believe? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think people get sensitive when it comes to topics about uh, human rights and uh, you know, war and people getting killed and uh, whose tax money is paying for the weapons and the soldiers that is killing innocent people. Uh, people, you know, I, I can understand why they would get up in arms about that and want to argue, but I don't know how that could be such a powerful feeling that you can't review fucking children's films on a podcast with somebody. 
Right. Yeah. I wonder what what is like the biggest issue that you and me politically like had like what's our biggest disagreement? I wonder if there even is one. I don't know if it's so much political as it is just like just general life philosophy, I guess, but I would say like you believe you like, you know, uh Having a wife, being a humble man, going to church, <laughs> uh, being wholesome and kind, you know, very different from my lifestyle, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think that really the only major thing that we probably differ on opinion wise is like religion. But and ain't that a fun one? Yeah, and it's like, I mean, we've joked about it back and forth before, but I don't think it's ever been like a major defining argument that we've had. Should that also go on audience espionage? Do you identify as an atheist? Like what percentage of our fans would say yes? And does agnostic count as well? Hmm. I would say it would be differentiated between atheist and any form of religious beliefs okay. because there's how about do you believe in a god think. yeah okay because it's like if you get into the weeds with it there's way too many different things that you could say oh are you this or are you that you know mm -hmm. it's easier for this espionage game to just say are you atheist or do you believe in some higher power well with that should we just uh play a couple rounds of audience espionage before we move on to jojo biggs sure Okay, let's do it. And I'm going to start off question number one, Biggs. What percentage of the audience would say they do not believe in a God? Okay. Do you believe in a God? I'm going to have Biggs give me his answer. What percentage does not believe in a God? Limecatcher says, how will this affect the release of Ballfrog 2? I don't believe there's going to be a Ballfrog 2. <laughs> Okay, the poll is live for everybody watching live to vote in. Uh, Biggs, That's you, usual. Biggs, you were answering for for no. Yeah, they don't believe in one. Okay, wow, you you got some strong feelings about this fan base, Biggs. What the fuck? I've talked to uh, not all of them, obviously, but a, a good portion, and I feel like I've gauged their beliefs on certain things. I'd say pretty poorly. <laughs> if you look at, are you looking at the results right now, Biggs? No, I don't look at the re oh, results okay. until they are over. Wow. Okay. Well, we have about fifty-six votes, and I don't know how many viewers we have, but okay, it's about to hit sixty. That's where we pretty much end it, right, Biggs? Yeah, around there. It's typically the where it normally ends up being. Okay. Uh, it looks like thirty-seven percent of people said no. They do not believe in a god. So about two-thirds really? of the audience is uh, Gnostic in some way. Interesting. Well, I, I guess the reasoning behind my answer now is probably just people not, not being open with that sort of thing. Because at least from most of the people I've talked to, whether it's on Discord or Snapchat, are always like, atheism this, atheism that. So... Yeah, my guess was 89%. I was way on the opposite side of the spectrum. I would say to those 60... or Wait, if they don't believe... Okay, so I wasn't that far off. Then. You were 53% off of me. Oh, the, okay, so the way you worded the poll is opposite of the question you asked me. What? I said, do you believe in a you God? Me... You're answering for no. Did I fuck right. this up? No, 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 you're fine. I just... I looked at the percentages backwards. So I would say to those 63%, I feel like you should be, you don't have to be open with it. Just be more comfortable with it. You know what I mean? You mean like in this community? Like you guys well, want to rise up and make us atheists feel bad? Like, well, come on, no. let's prove to the monkey community <laughs> that we're the real stars of the show here. Yeah, like SPD Start subjugating says, us. Generally, if you talk to an atheist about any form of religion, it just ends in an argument. But I don't think it's something you should feel like you need to hide or try to, like, bend to other people, you know? Like, if you're a devout whatever you follow, and all of your friends are, like, trash-talking and atheists, this and all that, don't feel the need to, like, morph into what they're saying, because it, it just doesn't lead to anything happy for you. I, uh... And hopefully this advice 
mostly only pertains to like teenagers. Like hopefully when people hit our age, they stop having religious debates yeah. with their friends, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I just know early on I was very, I was not very confident in my beliefs. So I never really talked about them. And I don't know. I feel like I could have done better with that sort of thing when I was younger. Not. Now, you were right, because me and Bananas and all of our little atheist crew in high school, we would have made fun of you. So you were right to, <laughs> to not <laughs> to not be vulnerable around us. We were little shitheads, uh, atheist crusaders and everything. So I think uh, it's better that, uh, you know, you, you came out of the closet as a Christian in adult life. <laughs> Uh, looks like we got a couple super. Yeah, Test there. said uh, Florian diss track will bring your career back, brother. I'm sure there are some <laughs> diss tracks that would bring back my career, brother, but Florian, highly unlikely. I don't know if anybody cares. Uh, Test also says, Monk, if you're a cringe atheist and think making content is your god, why don't you spiral out of control to be like only use me blade and make lol cow content? Uh, some might say everything I post counts as locale content so what does that even mean uh, i guess i don't understand so blade basically the only way guys like that get attention is just by being alcoholic drunken embarrassments and people donate to them to watch them like get way too wasted and piss their pants and destroy their environment uh but i mean honestly test that is tempting it probably would make a lot more money <laughs> but I think that the stuff we're making now is probably okay. Uh, Biggs, you need to ask a question for round one of audience espionage. Okay, let's see. Um, I should have prepared some. <laughs> What's the other one that we prepared already on this show? Just steal that one. Uh, I'll go random like left field. Uh, what percentage of you prefer Norse mythology over Greek mythology? So I'm I'm picking what percentage likes Norse, Norse. over Greek. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I only have to beat you with your fifty three percent off. Uh, start a poll. Okay. Which do you prefer, Norse myth? Uh, you guys, I don't need to type all this. You guys know what we're saying. Or Greek. Norse or Greek? Let's go. Major D says you should watch the silent version of. Oh, the poll is in my way. Now. Of the Ten Commandments, the second half of the film is about a guy who is the 1923 equivalent of Vincent the Atheist. How can you tell if it's a silent film? Like Vincent, <clears throat> uh, you know, half of it is in the facial scrunching but the other half you gotta have that voice how do you know he's eight or how do you know he's vincent <laughs> biggs it's looking pretty good for my guess i gotta say it's looking pretty damn good i, I mean i'm getting three thousand points if we're playing espionage right now biggs but at wow should we end it at, at 53 votes biggs because i have it dead on yeah, might as well. Right around where we ended. So. I said thirty percent would choose Norse, and it's literally exactly thirty percent. Wow! Wow! Am I the the world's greatest uh, audience espionager, Biggs? It sounds like it. <laughs> Man, so many people are in Greek mythology. Tell me, this. what is the appeal of Norse mythology, <clears throat> Biggs? I don't really, I don't think I know too much about that. I think for me, I just really enjoy the idea and any kind of entertainment media that's put out about vikings i just think they're really cool more so than like the romans like the roman empire i don't find that as appealing as like vikings in general well biggs would you like to hear a little bit of one piece factoids about norse mythology sure. you see oda our god the author of one piece and was inspired to write the story because he watched a, a cartoon called Vicky the Viking. So really, without Norse mythology, we, w we wouldn't have one piece at all. 
And in the brand new chapter that came out illegally today, early, uh, the Viking giant pirates do make an appearance. Spoiler alert. So it's all coming full circle, Biggs. That's why after we finish JoJo 190, we will do One Piece 1200 so that, <laughs> so that you can finally see those North pirates. <clears throat> Norse pirates. Not, nice. not North. Uh, next question for audience espionage, Biggs. Did I do this one last time? Because maybe I'll skip it. Did I ask, uh, do you fear death? Uh, you asked, would you prefer to drown or burn? I don't think you said. Okay, like, so, okay, so this is death. a good one. Do you fear death? Yes or no? Biggs, what percentage of the, of the audience do you think? No, they do not fear death. Now, if they stay on the same trend of answering truthfully. Biggs, we have no way of knowing if anybody's ever answering anything truthfully. Not just on this poll, but in everyday life. Uh, you were answering for no, no. correct? Okay. Yeah. The poll is live for the good folks at home. Uh, I fear an early death. <clears throat> Shout out to Mad. Uh... I think fearing death is reason a boo. <laughs> okay. Uh, there was no pain before you were born, so why be scared of death? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think the act of dying is objectively painful in most scenarios. Yeah, so I, I don't know <laughs> this one hardcore again. Like being so dead, I understand, but the act of dying, I can see being afraid of. You can end the poll now. It's okay. the same number. Uh, fifty-five percent of people said no; they do not fear death. Biggs, what answer did you give? I said twenty-five. I feel like a lot of those people are lying. In oh, general shut sense. up! Most people are afraid of dying. But we just found out two-thirds of them believe in God. So wouldn't it make sense that, like, the, the, why would you fear death if there's an afterlife and you're going to heaven, right? I mean, that's true, but. Even, like, that I know of, a lot of Christians that I know are still afraid of death because death is scary. It doesn't mean they're not, you know, excited for the afterlife, but it's like still the act of dying is a scary thing just innately. Okay. Well, you were off by 30, Biggs. So what do you know yeah. about dying? Would that I'm be a good a... segment for the show? What if we killed you and brought you back so you could tell us what death is like? We should do that for next episode. Oh, man, I have a movie you should watch. Uh, let me try and think of... Oh, what? Donnie Darko? I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good uh, one. It's called It's called Martyrs. Have you seen the movie called no. Martyrs? You should watch that. It's interesting. It uh, It's similar to that idea. Okay. Dying and talking about the afterlife and that stuff. Uh, test, I think, has a suggestion for you. They said, uh, ask if your parents divorced... Who would you prefer starts dating Mel Gibson, your mom or dad? Uh, do you want to do you want to do that, Biggs? I don't know about that one. Is that the question you want to do for round two? Sure. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why not? If your parents divorced, would you rather your mom or your dad start dating Mel Gibson, Biggs? What percentage of people are gonna choose dad? They would rather... See, if you pick a stupid fucking question, it's going to be impossible for you to even gauge a good answer. <laughs> what kind of strategy is this? It's fine. I <laughs> care about this game anyways. I'm, I don't think I've won a single time. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, did you go twice in a row? Is it my turn, actually? I think the last few times we've gone, like, you do one, then I do two, then you do two. Oh, okay, then that's I fine, then. Whatever. We're just having fun anyway. Who fucking cares? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Mel Gibson. <laughs> Who would you rather date Mel Gibson? A mom or dad? Biggs answered for dad. The poll is live for the good folks at home. Biggs, we need to do better. We can't be succumbing to these kinds of questions, even four or five dollars. <laughs> Does it make sense for you to go twice in a row if I'm trying to get a better score than you? 
I mean, the last few times we've done it, this is how we've done it. So I don't think that's accurate, but maybe. What Big's got it right? <laughs> Big said fifty percent, and it's fifty-fifty right now. So Big's wins. <laughs> hmm. Wow, good job. I guess that is a good strategy. Come up with something so stupid that just by the laws of basic math and <laughs> random choice, it'll have to be 50-50. Because there is no real answer to choose. I don't understand the question. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll do one more question, and then we'll move on to our final segment. How's that sound, Biggs? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read off some of these bigs. You tell me which one we should do right now. And then, uh, I'll save the rest for later. Should we do, um, would you rather have an OnlyFans daughter or incel son? Do you like that one? There's, uh, have you ever masturbated to an AI generated image? That one's funny. Let's okay, let's do that one. one. Biggs, what percentage of people do you think... Yes, they would admit that they knowingly masturbated to an image that was either created in AI or modified by it. And so ma Major D, welcome to the major uh, measly few. What's that, Biggs? So I'm answering for the people that have? Yeah, people who said, yes, they have done that. Okay, big answer. Light. It's getting dark in here now. Yeah, turn on your bright red light. Okay, the poll is live. Uh, um, by the way, folks, if you become a member of the channel like uh, Major D just did, you will get early access to new uploads. And uh, maybe some emojis are in there. A little picture of Aggie next to your name. Okay, the, the poll is going. Biggs answered for yes. And it looks like it's about 50-50 right now. That's how long has AI been around that half of people have jerked off to it now, Biggs? Like a year? Gooners are gonna goon. Is this just like those Taylor Swift photos? Like, is that what? Oh, what else man. are your people jerking off to? You brought that up. Now it's probably gonna skew the results. Well, I I did at request that somebody AI generate uh, you in those same Taylor Swift photo poses, but nobody came through with it evan says pokemane deep fakes okay uh have you ever heard of rule 34 uh but that's like that's not ai generated necessarily right anyway the answer for yes is 40 percent said yes they have direct off to ai what did you say biggs i said 34 percent so six percent off Pretty damn close. close. We, we had some very close answers today. Is that enough audience guespionage for now, Biggs? I'll just give you the win on that one because I lost track of what we were even doing. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I'll have <sighs> to uh, think of some for next week. Now, if I really have to pee, should I do it now, halfway through the show, or hold it in for another 40 minutes, Biggs? Well, knowing you and your bladder, you should probably go now. Okay. Just read the chat. Hang out with these people. I'll be back ASAP, fam. You guys saying no or lying? Why do you say that, Deli? I did it thinking Biggs finally leaked his OnlyFans. I, if I remember right, at one point I set up an OnlyFans as a joke, and I had like pictures of um, Blaze and Isabel on there, um, monkeys, cats. It was like an extension of the uh, the Instagram that I'd put up. Eat a McDouble with the wrapper on stream? Oh, man, I would love to right now. I'm actually really hungry. <laughs> I haven't eaten yet today, so. Have I seen October Sky? Yes. It's been a, a super long time, though. I When did that? Let's see. It came out in 99. I probably did not see that movie until 
twenty twenty twelve, thirteen, maybe a little after that. I remember it being a good movie, but it's just been so long that I, I'm gonna have to rewatch it again once we get to it on the wheel for me to be able to talk about it because it's it's been too long. Invite Randy, you coward. I mean, we we all wish Randy was here, but he's a no show. We might have to get a wellness check going on him. Misinform misinformation is a fun hobby. That's what I true. miss, Biggs? Uh, not much. Uh, have you seen October Sky? And if so, how long has it been since you watched it? I have not seen it. Yeah, it's been since like. Is that a Nazi school. movie? Uh, honestly, I don't remember the premise. I know it's a Jake movie, though. Whoa! I watched it at some point in high school. Then it's probably on the wheel <clears throat> of Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to check one thing, and then we have a big announcement for everybody at home. Life-changing news. You, you ready for this, Biggs? Good pee? That as well. But, Biggs, it's time we finally sit down with the audience and reveal... The sad truth that we will no longer be doing JoJo 190. Am I lying, Biggs? You are not lying. Sorry, guys. JoJo 190, as you guys know it, is over forever. As you recall, JoJo 190 was every week for 190 weeks. Me and Biggs would end a podcast episode reviewing one episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, but we've decided, based on some of the feedback and some of the advice saying don't review it one episode at a time, uh, we've decided to change everything about JoJo 190. It will now be once per month, and instead of one episode, it'll be five. That's right, folks. We're technically picking up the pace just a little <laughs> bit. Every month, you'll get five episodes of JoJo reviewed by Mumkey and Biggs. How's that sound? I mean, it sounds fine to me. I feel like it'll be both better because they're getting more more of the content in one episode, but a little bit harder for us because it's like, how do you condense five episodes worth of stuff into 20 minutes or so, you know? But Well, the I've segment got... might have to be a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've done better about taking notes, so I actually remember, like, key points i wanted to talk about so for this episode we have finished jojo's part one we watched episodes six seven eight and nine not quite five but there's no point in starting fucking jojo's part two for one episode uh what is part one even called biggs uh fan i almost said phantom menace um, Phantom Blood, I'm pretty sure. Okay, fan so when I post this on Mumkey D. Jones, the the anime and manga review YouTube channel, I could say Blood... Wait, what is Phantom Blood arc? Phantom Blood. We finished the Phantom Blood arc. Epic. Okay, well, let's get into it, Biggs. Uh, I got notes for each individual episode, so we'll go through it, but generally, now that we've reached the end of Jonathan Joestar's journey... And this is, I assume, the last time we'll ever see Dio. Should I sing that Tenacious D song again just for old time's sake? I think so. <laughs> do you know how many fans are pissed that you just said yes to that, Biggs? Because <laughs> now care. I have to do it. I don't care. <laughs> I want to hear it. Do you know the lyrics at all? Can you do it with me? No. You can't I don't sing know Dio's part? No. <laughs> Dio, can you hear me? I am lost and so alone. I'm asking for your guidance. Won't you come down from your throne? I need a tight compadre who can teach me how to rock. My father thinks you're evil, but man, he can suck a cock. Rock is not the devil's work, it's magical and rad. I'll never rock as long as I am stuck here with my dad. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 I hear you, brave young Jables, you are hungry for the rock. But to learn the ancient message, secret doors you must unlock. 
Escape your father's clutches in this oppressive neighborhood. On a journey you must go to find the land of Hollywood. In the city of fallen angels, where the ocean meets the sand, you will form a strong alliance and the world's most awesome band. To find your fame and fortune through the valley you must walk. You will face something in a demon. Now go, my son, and rock! We, we've lost 24 viewers <laughs> since he started. That's exactly what they were hoping for. Somebody said, some, somebody joking. clip this. Like, motherfucker, listen to the show. This is the second time we've done this. It's been <laughs> clipped. Bo so bo 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 76 when? Good question, Big. Should we do that instead? Start reviewing Bobo episodes instead of Jojo. Jojo, 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 Jo, or Bobo, 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 Bobo. -bo -bo. We can do that instead of One Piece. <laughs> That's fine. I, you know what? I agree with that. <laughs> but uh, to the 24 people who left, uh, rock on. I'll see you over on the Monkey D. Jones channel. They probably just wanted to wait to hear it there. But Biggs, <laughs> we've got four episodes of JoJo to review in the next 20 minutes, Biggs. Where do we begin? Uh, so last, uh, last time we talked about episode five. So we would be starting on episode six. Um, so far, so good, Biggs. Okay. Now, so, now, which shape has three sides to it, Biggs? So while we're doing the easy stuff. <laughs> it's a triangle. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh. Now, okay. what it, Biggs, uh, which countries make up Great Britain? Uh, You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Is one of those? Do you say dumpster? Yeah. Is that your Is nickname that for London? <laughs> uh, so, anyways, <laughs> episode five into the, what? Like in the middle of a fight or like right before the fight? I'm trying to remember. I think it ended in the middle of the fight, right? Between um, so basically, Bluford was his name. We get two episodes of JoJo and friends beating off some more of these zombie boss fights, and then the last two episodes are about finally dealing with Dio. Is that an easier way to summarize it, Biggs? Sure. Okay. Uh, if yeah, yeah, we can just fast forward to that if you want. Well, we're reviewing the whole section at once. You know, we don't have to go necessarily super grainy in order. But uh, something I'm realizing about Hamon, this uh, the power, is that uh, maybe in the past when we were trying to dissect it a little bit, that might be a little unnecessary. I think with things like uh, Chakra in Naruto or Hockey in One Piece or Haman here, it's really just uh, a logic or an excuse, a reasoning for the artist to draw epic, awesome shit that you, you need an explanation for. Like, in this section, Haman is used, they take a bunch of leaves and turn the, turn the leaves into a paraglider. And the, the reason why is just because Haman said that they could. Like, you could just use his power to turn leaves into a hang glider to fly away. And that's like one of eight crazy things that they, that they do in this section. My second note for episode six is Hamon leaf glider. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? <laughs> so really, the power is you can just magically do anything that the author wants to do for that chapter, pretty much. Well, no, they... I mean, yes, but yeah. also they go into detail about what Homon is, and it's like he talks about how the mask is the same power just on the opposite side of the spectrum, that sort of idea, and how the Homon they wield is from the power of the sun, and that's why it hurts vampires, because it's the mm. power of the sun. Okay, that might explain a lot of uh, how the fight ends up going down, but... uh uh, Jojo is up against this guy whose name I don't remember. He's like a zombie night guy. And he ends up beating him by observing the humanity of his spirit within. And then a bunch of flowers start growing around the zombie. And then he, I think he gives his sword to Jojo. Am I missing anything? Uh, yeah, that was Blueford. Right, okay. Um, so yeah, he... He pretty much beats him, and Jojo can tell he's dying, so he stops fighting, 
and realizes that the humanity is coming back to him and he feels like human pain again for the first time. So then they have like a heartfelt moment and yeah, he gives it, it was beautiful. He gives him the sword uh, that has the word luck written on it, but then he adds a what he had a P to make it pluck. Yeah, so now so it's a sword pluck. of luck and pluck. So he can pluck Dio from this world. Oh, is that what that meant? I thought it meant that he was plucky. But I guess your reasoning makes more sense. <laughs> He's going to pluck him from this world? Is that really what they said? It was something close to that. <laughs> I've never heard person. somebody use the word pluck in that context at all. But a Ted comment says, who copes more, Florian or King Cobra? Uh, I mean, Florian's a millionaire and Cobra's, you know, poor. So I, I guess Cobra probably copes more. Uh, we get a flashback for... Hold up. Okay. Important news. Okay. Randy has made it to the stream. Oh, thank goodness. Welcome, Randy. Randy the Wild we were Horse. worried about you. Yeah, thank you for making it. Uh, we, we get a flashback for Zapelli, and it turns out that he was trained in Hamon by a Raz Al Ghul type character named Ton Petty. Not Tom Petty, but Ton Petty. Uh, you basically, you go up into the mountains and he'll teach you magical kung fu, uh, just like Ra's al Ghul. And uh, this character will later show up in person. He's not just a flashback character. He he comes to help Zapelli, but uh-oh, we'll get to this. Zapelli might not be long for this anime world, Biggs. Yeah, I mean, so when it goes into that flashback, it talks about how Zapelli went and got his power of the hormone where he learned how to wield it basically um so basically in this fight with uh man what was his name the other big guy i've got it written down biggs the answer is i forgot to write his name down uh uh never mind i don't think you actually wrote down did you i thought i did uh tarukas tarkas oh yeah whatever man Tarkus. Anyway, so uh, they use the Hamon hang glider. They they float away and eventually find themselves in like this night training ground, I guess, where uh, Jojo gets locked in there with Tarkus. And um, basically it comes around to where they, they can't find their way in. And the little kid that they were chasing, Poco, climbs through and unlocks yeah, the door. So I have a note here. Uh, I know that his name's Poco, but I would like to refer to him as uh, the Piss Child. Because he gets so scared that he pisses his pants, and there's like a nice close-up of this child's pants getting wet with with piss fear. <laughs> but then the character, the little piss child, becomes a hero because he's the only one who can fit through a little hole that can get him into the the cave to so he can open the door and they can all help Jojo fight T Tarkus. So uh, shout out to the piss pants boy, <laughs> the real MVP of episode six. But yeah, <clears throat> uh, so Jojo's like chained up and he's not able to move around and Tarkus is beating him. So the kid gets through, opens the door and Zapelli enters. And then it cues another another flashback where Zapelli is being told that his prophecy and how he's going to die is in a ruin. And a child's going to give him entry and he's going to save a lion that's like chained up or something. So he, it clicks and he's like, this is it. This is where I'm meant to die. And uh, so the outro of episode six was him doing a JoJo walk into the uh, into the fight mm. as uh, Tarkus is about to start engaging him, I guess you would say. Yeah, I, I don't really know why this destiny plot needed to be in here at all. That Zapelli he requested, how am I going to die? And Ton Petty, I guess, using his observation hockey, he can get a... A prophecy or premonition of the future and he doesn't know like the date or when he's gonna die he just gives him these vague ideas of yeah going into the room opened by a kid and, and unchaining the tiger why did we need that why can't Zapelli uh realize i have this power where if i get ripped in half i can shake somebody's hand and it will multiply their power tenfold why does he need the prophecy why can't he just just do that because it's the correct, you know, way to win the fight. Um, and what was more confusing for me, too, is like he had this prophecy that he was going to die. And it's like 
he started to fight Tarkus and pretty much just immediately got wrecked. Like, <laughs> he gets fucking ripped gets in chained. half. He he gets chained up immediately and gets torn in half and like pretty much did nothing to help win the fight other than what you said where he gave Jojo his his I think they said they give gave him his will or something like that. Is what happened. All I know he, is like his he, hormone and his will power. He, he gets ripped in half by the chain and then he uses something called ultimate deep pass overdrive and he is allowed to give all of his Hamon power to Jojo and it they said specifically their Hamon's multiplied and fused together to make uh, an ultimate power far beyond both of them individually. Uh so I, you know this is the the moment in Star Wars where Obi Wan gets killed by Vader, you know, you need the the older man who teaches the the wise master, the mentor figure to die after teaching the the kid. Uh, we get that moment, and now Jojo is stronger than ever, and he's he's fucking shit up. He kills uh, uh, the stupid monster whose name we don't remember, and we're back on the journey without Zapelli. Well, I'd like to point something out before we move on from that fight. I, for one, thought the the soundtrack during that fight was awesome. What did you think of it? It was like, like this prog music came on, and it was just mm. like really cinematic. Uh, it was probably great. I, I don't remember. It's not sticking out in my mind, but that's Sad. fine. That's fine. I almost looked it up, but I forgot to like search it after the episode. Uh, they come across a demon with a super long tongue. And Jojo grabs him by the tongue and throws him to the ground and fucking kills him pretty quick. That was awesome. Uh, and then all of Zapelli's now that Zapelli's dead, all of his friends just show up. <laughs> they, they just show up. They're like, oh, hey, hey you're Jojo? Yeah, we're Zapelli's friends. He called us to come help you. Yeah, so he wrote a letter to tell them, like, hey, you know this mask I've been searching for? It's over here, and this guy has it. Um, and I'm traveling with Jojo, so, like, if you guys could head this way... Um, and then obviously he died before they could show up, but his friends are Dyer and Strizo are their names. Yeah. Do you know, have you ever had any experiences with somebody named Dyer? I haven't, but somebody has. <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want. Oh man, I'm, st I'm looking at my camera over here and it looks like I turned into uh to Biden. You don't look that old. No, you remember his Twitter post? Just as they drew it up, Dark Brandon. Oh, uh, when he was celebrating the <laughs> the mass shooting that happened at the the Kansas City parade. That is just as he planned. Uh, that picture. I was so confused. At first, I thought it was like an alt account, and I was like, "What is this alt text?" Dark Brandon. And I'm like, "Oh wait, this is the actual Twitter account." So. I can guarantee you, Biden has never seen that image before. Like, just because it's on his Twitter doesn't mean he even knows he has a Twitter. Right. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I I wrote down, um, where's that? Nasty tongue guy tries to kill Poco. He just kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, Poco knows who it is. It's like Mr. Clark, I think he called him. And he's like, your sister's furious. Get home now. And as soon as they turn their backs on him, like, this giant tongue comes out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they just immediately kill it. Like, it is mm -hmm. no biggie. And then that's when Dyer appears. Um, at first, Jojo thinks he's uh, an enemy, so they engage in a very short fight. I think, like, two punches are thrown. He's like, wait, no, I'm a friend. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of strange. Like, if he already knew who Jonathan was, why would he pretend to fight him? <laughs> but sure. No clue. It's it's Jojo part one, okay? The author, he's, he's getting a feel for how storytelling works. I'm sure it'll... Everything yeah. will be better in going forward. So then uh, the rest of the episode, the only things to note that I put down was Ton Petty showed up with the group to help uh, fight Dio. He tells them he's in that castle over there. Uh, I can feel like his menacing power or something over there. And then it shows Dio like, uh, you know, he knows they're coming. But then it's like this weird pan shot where there's all these animals with human heads on it. Did you do you remember that? Are those not the zombies, like the horde of zombies that they have to fight later on in episode well, like, eight? They're sitting in his lap like a, like a villain's mm. pet. 
Huh, interesting. That? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, and it, it never like, comes back? It was like a dog with a human head and like a chicken with a human head. <laughs> it was so weird. I'm like, I don't remember this part. Go see um, uh, Poor Things, the movie, if you want to see that in live action. No, thanks. Uh, but then, yeah, episode eight opens with um, the reveal that Poco's sister has been taken by Dio. And uh, and she she's up against a strange blob creature known as Doobie. Uh, yeah. Biggs, have you ever had to battle a doobie or the effects of a doobie before? Maybe once or twice. Yeah, get too too doobied up and bad things can happen. <laughs> but thankfully, Jojo and friends show up at the castle and save her from doobie. Yeah, I put down doobie looking like Medusa. Or no, he doobie looking like Medusa with the snakes on his head. Med- Medusa doobie doo, Biggs. <laughs> sure yo the <da> man <laughs> that's right you, <laughs> you are a dumb man biggs uh, uh but here's but yeah, the thing JoJo... here's the thing dyer he he's not all about jojo being the main character dyer says hey zapelli was my friend even though dio did not directly kill him for some reason i need vengeance here jojo i'm sorry jojo that this guy had a personal uh, beef against you and leached off of your life and your family for fucking decades and, and killed your father. But me, this random guy who just showed up, I deserve the vengeance to fight Dio. And uh, he shows off another power that Haman can do, which is that y- y- you could just fly. Like, like you could just fly. <laughs> He's <just> basically <laughs> Goku. Like, like this Dyer just, you know, starts flying at him. Oh, and... we're we're not even to the part where the random flying is the thing. Like, this is one thing, but the last episode they just went ham with randomly floating. <laughs> well, it's been established as a Haman power bigs, so check your privilege. But uh Well, somebody that was floating in the final episode didn't have Hamon powers. Just saying. Spoiler alert. Uh, Anyways, uh, Dyer so yeah, gets Dyer... his ass frozen solid. Like we're going full uh, Aokiji in one piece. Okay, Dio just has the ultimate ice powers. If you touch me, I'm gonna freeze you. If you touch me with an item, I'll freeze that item, and then it will go up and freeze your whole body. Uh, and Dyer gets shattered into pieces. And when he when there's nothing left but just his head, he can still breathe and talk. And he spits a rose <laughs> into Dio's face and like cuts him with the thorn. <laughs> As just a head. I thought that was great. Yeah, he's just like laying in a little random bed of roses and then spit it at Dio, uh, hurt him a little bit, and then froze again. <laughs> yes. He wasn't being touched. The freezing powers explodes. stopped long enough for the <laughs> the decapitated head to spit yeah. something and talk. And then it froze him anyway. I was fine with it. It's Kino. Shout out to Dyer. He deserved a happier ending, in my opinion. So then uh, we see a bunch of zombies attack the crew. They're taking them out left and right. And then Jojo finally gets a good hit on Dio. And presumably using Hamon, you would think this is the end because he uses... Um, He's got the luck name? pluck Blueford's. sword. He's using Blueford's sword. He imbues it with Hamon. The Hamon that he Dio that is combined with him and Zapelli. Yeah, so yeah. Th- this is as powerful as this JoJo could ever possibly be. Chops off fucking Dio's arm and then starts bifurcating him from his head and like cutting his entire body fucking in half. So I'm thinking, what are we doing in episode nine? There's no way Dio's coming back from this. How many episodes <laughs> could possibly end with Dio being absolutely destroyed and killed only to come back at the next episode, Biggs. How how many times could they do that in a nine-episode series? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, as that's happening, Dio just starts laughing. He's like, you think you've won, but the fight's only just begun. And he, like, lunges his fingers into Dio's throat and start, or into Jojo's throat and starts, like, sucking his life. And then he's like, twiddling with one of his veins yeah he's got like some artery like some important artery in your neck that he's just like playing with between his fingers and uh, the animation on that something about it really was sickly to me you know it made me like ugh, i don't want this man sticking his fingers in my neck and playing with the shit he finds yeah that was freakish Uh, so yeah he's like if you move you're gonna die because i'm gonna pop your vein or whatever and then a dio like he has like uh like red tubes come out of his 
cut off arm to reattach to the other part of his arm and you know he's back at full power now like he could just heal everything up no problem yeah and then uh somehow jojo makes his escape from his grapple and gets a huge hit off on dio and and they make it look like he kills him in one hit because like his entire like mid torso just like dissipates into like this uh, like ashy effect, like the same as when the vampires were killed by the mm. the the sun. He's basically like withering away, and he falls off the side of the castle, like withering away. So once again, we're left to believe Dio is dead. And I even watched through the credits, waiting. Like, okay, there's got to be a post credit scene. They did that last time. There was a fake out defeat of Dio, <laughs> but no, not even that. They just, you could have just stopped watching it episode eight and assumed it was a happy ending and he beat the bad guy, but no, they have yeah, to come it's like back episode, for It's like Death Note when, uh, when L dies and you're like, okay, I guess it's over. A happy wait, ending for everybody. 10 more episodes, huh? I think there's way more than 10 after that. And spoiler alert for Death Note, by the way, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> fuck You em. haven't seen it by now. Yeah, yeah. get fucked at this rate. Uh, they had to ruin poor Jojo's life by giving us a final episode. And it seems like everything's going well. Jojo gets married to Arena Pendleton or whatever. I guess now her name's Arena Joestar. It's beautiful. He's he's going on a ship, on a giant cruise ship to America for their honeymoon. And I was thinking, is this the right period? Is the ship going to disembark and we're going to see that says Titanic on the side of it? Like, is that what JoJo's, is that how it's going to end? Uh, and I wish it would have been because we also see uh, some strong men are loading onto the cruise ship a giant vampire coffin. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I wonder who's going to be in there. And I thought yeah, it'd be but... really cool if they had like their final, final battle on the Titanic as it was sinking. But I think I was a few decades off. Yeah, and then uh, they very clearly hear somebody inside. Yeah, breathing. You can tell, you can tell it's Dio's, <laughs> Dio's voice actor because somehow even when he breathes, you can tell it's that voice actor. And they're <laughs> like, huh, oh, well, I guess we'll just load it on the ship. Whatever. Hey, they were paid to do a job, Biggs. Don't ask questions. Just do it. Um, so we have this final episode. And we don't need to go through the nitty gritty of everything. Like basically <laughs> everybody on this ship dies, including Dio and Jojo other than arena Pendleton. And is this just a random baby Biggs? Yeah. From what I could tell, uh, the zombies kill some random woman and she drops her child and arena runs and grabs the baby and then jumps in the casket as everything's exploding. Now, is it implied at the end that Arena is also pregnant with JoJo's baby? Because she says uh, there's life in her. I didn't know if that was a metaphor or literally like a a baby child's life is inside of her. Because if JoJo... JoJo dies at the end fighting Dio, like he sacrifices himself to save everybody because the zombie is going to outbreak and take over the world. Uh... And I was under the impression that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the series, was about this family lineage and that each new JoJo series or whatever the fuck is just like one of his descendants down the line until we catch up to the modern day. Maybe we'll go into the future. I don't know. But if he does not actually have a descendant because he died here, I don't know. Biggs, am I missing something? Is she pregnant? Is is the baby just going to be adopted as a Joe star since that's technically her last name now? Or do, are the JoJo's just not related? So I believe your deduction of her being pregnant is correct. Okay. okay. So is her baby the star of the next JoJo part or do they skip a few generations? And this is where we get into some murky waters where I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, so, well, we'll have to leave it up to what you believe. What do you think? Uh, what do you think is going to happen with Arena and the child? I didn't know we would see them again. I thought we were just moving on. That's a question <laughs> yeah. for you. I feel like, like do it's going to. We'll see them again, or is it going to? I know, I think we're skip? done. I think it's going to be like we skip two or three generations every time, and that between parts there are no recurring characters. 
Um, let's see what else should I ask? Yeah, so the, the thing I brought up before was when Dio's head is just randomly floating around. <laughs> Do you remember that part? Sure. When he's like watching the, I can't remember what his name was. They called him the, the apothecary. Yeah, like Wang, I think his name was. Yeah, just like the guy who recovered Dio's head and wants to help him take over the world. Yeah, Jonathan's like using Hamon to control the dead corpse to stop the ship and blow it up or something. Yeah. And Dio's head's just floating around. I thought that was hilarious. He he has the guy stopping the piston, which will make the boat explode with steam. Uh, and I think we just got a... A, a Streamlabs donation uh, from Nuggums. He said, the Blaze Black playthrough carried me through 2020. I liked when Biggs would say a pun, and then there was dead silence. Yeah, me too. Uh, evidently, based on the chat reaction today, some people aren't a big fan of uh, when me and Biggs do some awkward silence, but yeah, it's that's just it's the way classic. it be. It's just how we be. <laughs> the longer we can stare at each other, silently judging the other person's joke the better. Uh, any other questions or points about this final episode or this final section, Biggs? Uh, two questions. One, do you think it was a, a good ending as far as like the whole part one went? No. No, I actually think it's fucking tragic. I think that this story of Jonathan Joestar is a horrible story that I wish had not been told because... He does not get any happiness in life. His entire life, he's tormented by Dio. And then when he thinks he's finally free and he marries his dream childhood crush, the sweetheart girl, and they're going off on their honeymoon, uh, it's destroyed. He doesn't get to enjoy it for a full day. He just encourages his pregnant wife to drink wine, and karma punishes him for that. And he has to sacrifice his life with Dio. And yeah, I feel bad for Jojo. He didn't deserve this. And if every JoJo part ends with the JoJo dying, this is going to be a rough series. <laughs> uh, I guess two more questions. Um, trying to think. I forgot the other one. So I guess the other question is... Damn, why did I randomly just forget both of them? Well, while you're thinking... Any questions you have for me? Uh, we, we had a, a super chat from Pokey, the scowling cat. He said, how much do I have to pay you to review my book? Uh, depends on how long it is, buddy. Shoot me an email. Uh, but anyway, uh, Biggs, I think for part one, if we're going to do a tier list of each part, I think I had some fun with it. You know, uh, it's interesting to embark into this new mythos with all these strange new characters and powers and everybody's named after music from the seventies. And I appreciate that. But ultimately I feel like this added up to not enough for me to love part one. And I guess this is the least popular part probably for a reason. Uh, I'd probably put it at C tier on the tier list overall. Uh, again, individual fights and episodes were good, but I think it added up to just disappointment for me. I, I don't like JoJo's fate. I don't think he deserved it. Yeah, so I feel like that's how most people view part one when they're first watching through the first time. I think it's once you come back after you've watched all that's out so far, you kind of come back with a, a different view on it and like more of a like a soft spot for it, I guess. Because when I first watched it, I thought it was really cool, but like you said, I didn't really like how it ended. But then once I got through the rest of the show and I came back to it, it was like, you know, just it was cool, I guess. I, I think the general storytelling here is also pretty weak. Like it's just <laughs> the story is not much more than we're walking from one place to another. We're, and then like characters just show up and we talk to them. I, I feel like there's just not like a depth to the story at all. It's just very it's like Saturday morning cartoon level. Yeah. it, And it also felt very rushed because it's yeah. like, like for instance, when Zapelli gets killed, this kid Poco just starts sobbing like it was his best friend. And I'm like, 
Dude, they literally met you like three hours ago. Why? <laughs> yeah, do you, you care like about you were brainwashed Zipoli? and attacked them like two minutes ago, dude. Why do you care? Yeah, and it's like, and then when Dyer dies, and JoJo's like, you know, sobbing, he's like, no, it's like, you didn't know him. What is happening mm-hmm. here? <laughs> like, it's just I feel like he was rushing through it to get something out, and didn't have. Like, if it had more episodes and more time to, like, build the connections between characters, it would have made sense. But, yeah, to me, it felt pretty rushed. But I think the next handful of parts is going to be fine. Like, they won't feel as rushed like that. Well, everybody, stay <laughs> tuned. One month from now, we will be reviewing the first five episodes of JoJo's Part 2, which is called what? Uh, Battle Tendencies is part two. Battle Tendencies. How many episodes is that going to be? Uh, let's see. Count. It is 17. Okay, so we'll knock that out in approximately th- three or four months if we do five every episode. Might be yeah. tricky for those final two, but... Yeah, we'll probably end up just doing what we did for this, just like lump in the last few with this with the last one um but then part three we jump up to 48 episodes oh boy that that's gonna take about a year i'd say (laughs) oh yeah the other question uh i was gonna say is overall do you think going forward you're going to be more or less interested in the show based off what you saw in this one this part well, I generally liked what I saw, and everybody says that it only gets better from here. So I've got high hopes, Biggs. I'm I'm hoping for some peak fiction to come. That's exciting, especially after all this time of you trash talking JoJo, saying you're never gonna. Watch How can him you trash like, talk something you know nothing about? I don't know. You answer the question. <laughs> I was just like, he's trashing so much. He just needs to watch it to like. And you're like, no, you have to like beat me in something to make me watch this. This trash. I'm like, well, wow. just wait till I get my revenge, Biggs, because we're doing Bo 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 76 coming soon. I'll do that. It's yeah. Fine. Bo 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 is a beautiful show. Uh, that's know, it for this uh, week's uh, JoJo, right, Biggs? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Do we have anything else to talk to these good folks at home about? Um, Not that I can think of. We could probably cut them loose. We've kept them... A decent bit for this JoJo bit. Yep. How long was that? Like 30 minutes or something? I don't know. (laughs) I do not know. Probably about 30 minutes. Uh, Yeah, I guess we'll hang out with the chat for a couple more minutes and then get the fuck out of here. How's that sound? Can we do another goon session, Biggs? About what? That's all Mingo wanted to know. Oh. Uh, When is the next episode of Tom and Mumkey Sewer Slide Perch? What is that? There's this guy named Tom Oliver who was a member of the PCP, and we did our own spinoff podcast called Monkey and Tom's Suicide Perch, where we just talked about being depressed and suicidal, and it lasted three episodes, and then Tom killed himself. <laughs> like, actually? What? That's kind of a dark thing to laugh at, but yeah, my friend is dead, Biggs. Thanks for bringing down the mood for me, but... Rip. No, he's not dead. <laughs> I, I haven't talked to him in like seven years. I don't fucking know. Is Biggs a Trekkie? Absolutely not. Biggs is a Dr. Whovian. True. Yeah. I don't know. I just, Star Trek was never something that I could really get into. It just never struck me as something I found interest in, I guess. That is fair. I watched I watched Babylon 5 with my grandma, and I found that more interesting. Was your grandma into it? Into Babylon 5? Oh, yeah. She's got, like, the entire series. Like, <laughs> what? On disc. I cannot um, imagine a, a grandmother being into sci-fi. I, you've been blessed with a better sci-fi. family than me. She's the one that got me into Doctor Who. She oh, loves man. Star Trek. She loves all that stuff, man. All my grandma like got me into was her. reality TV. I wish I would have had the sci-fi grandma instead. Yeah, she's uh, she tries to keep up with the times. She's got like the newest phone every year. She's got wow, like a pretty good PC setup for her what? job and all that stuff. She's is she a gamer? 
Uh, so funny enough, she has a pretty beefy computer, but the only game she ever likes playing is Bejeweled. <laughs> okay. And she likes Spider Solitaire too. She's Have you introduced woman. her to Candy Crush? Because you might change her life. She might already play that. It's got to be better than Bejeweled. Bejeweled is the game I'm thinking of, right? Like Candy Crush, but with jewels? Bejeweled Classic, is that? I'm pretty sure that's it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it's one of those types of games where you like you make things, line stuff yeah. up, and then it explodes. The most boring game I can points. think of, possibly. Yeah, she's she's an interesting person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Biggs, what's on the docket for next week? We don't have JoJo to do. We don't have Jake Gyllenhaal to do. What are we to do for episode 12? Uh, I guess more gaspionage. And should we try and bring a, a couple current events, I guess, to talk about? Do people still like talking about current events? It's not something I do. Uh, will it still be popular to make fun of two Mads' death in a week? Maybe we could just do that for an hour. Fair. I mean, if the the allegations are true and he's like a rapist <laughs> pedophile, then whatever. Sure. Yeah. Uh, somebody says you should have your grandma play ball frog. She might like it. How much do they have to raise on GoFundMe for you to make a video called Biggs's Grandma Plays Ball Frog? To get her even to do a video would be interesting. Uh, What's her price? Me? Why would I? I would just put up my PayPal and have them send me money. I'm just saying, account. what's the money amount for you to subject your poor grandma to ball frog? I don't know, a hundred bucks. <laughs> You heard him, folks. Send 100 bucks to Biggs' PayPal, and we'll get Grandma <laughs> ball frogging it up. Stay tuned tomorrow if you want to watch Aggie and Florian have their epic debate. It'll be exclusive on this channel because Aggie took the stream down this morning. Uh, and I think that's it, Biggs. Anything you want to say before I make them listen to the Rice Krispie Opera? Nope. See ya. Great moments at breakfast. Presented by Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Barbara, pass the Kellogg's Rice Krispies before it's all gone. <laughs> no more Rice Krispies. We ran out of Rice Krispies. My tears will not stop until I hear snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> My mother-in-law. He not to lose the least two months. But how long I'll be here? It's her 15th visit so far this year. <laughs>